Welcome to the Key Ring and Certificate Security Problems video. This video will cover the common problems related to SSL Key Ring and Certificate Configuration and Debugging Tips. After this video, you will be able to recognize and solve common problems related to SSL Key Ring and Certificate Configurations and learn some debugging tips. A site can encounter two common problems when implementing key ring and certificates for an SSL application. The first type of problem is related to installing certificates in a ZOS environment, typically with the ESM insert, add, import, or check cert commands for certificates. We will look at diagnosing these types of issues and discuss one particular issue related to certificate truncation. The second type of problem occurs after the configuration of key rings and certificates has been completed and the SSL connection fails. We will cover what type of documentation is needed, what to check for, and how to use ESM traces to determine the cause of the connection error. A site can encounter three types of errors when trying to insert or add a certificate to the ESM database or check cert a certificate in a ZOS data set. The problems can be related to 1. Trying to open the ZOS data set containing the certificate. 2. Encountering invalid data or format, reading the ZOS data set or 3. Encountering an unsupported algorithm in the certificate or certificate package. Here are the different ESM error messages for these three types of errors. This section will cover possible certificate formatting issues to be verified when encountering errors when reading or adding certificates to an ESM database. The ZOS ESMs support two certificate formats, DER binary and B64 as key. To determine the format of a certificate before FTPing a certificate from a Windows PC environment to ZOS, open the certificate file on the PC with Windows Notepad. Here is an example of what a DER binary certificate looks like from Windows Notepad. This is an example of a DER binary certificate, and it should be FTP'd in binary format, RecFMBB. Next, this is an example of what a B64 as key certificate looks like from Windows Notepad. Note the begin certificate and end certificate text lines. This certificate should be FTP'd in an as key format, RecFMBB. The next situation to check is certificate truncation. B64 as key format certificates can be subject to truncation problems when FTPing from Windows to ZOS to determine if a certificate was truncated. Browse the certificate file with ISPF Browse. If the certificate only contains three lines as shown here with the Begin Certificate and End Certificate text on the first and last line, with the second line containing characters through column 80, this would indicate that the certificate was truncated. To avoid B64 as key certificate truncation, the certificate should be FTP'd with the site subcommand wrap record option. Check your site's FTP application software for the site subcommand wrap record option. Here is an example of how to utilize the site subcommand wrap record option with FTP from the Windows command prompt. If you are still experiencing issues related to the certificate format, the certificate may not be in D or binary or B64 as key format that the ZOS ESM support. In this case, use the Windows or Browser's certificate wizard to import the certificate and then export the certificate in either DER binary or B64 as key format and then FTP to ZOS. If still having issues, use the ESM's check cert or rack D cert list command against the ZOS certificate file and contact the ESM vendor. Lastly, you can check with the certificate authority that provided the certificates and request that the certificates be resent in DER or B64 format. The next common type of problem that sites experience after setting up key ring and certificates is client server connection failures. Here are just some of the possible messages related to connection failures for different SSL applications. As you can see, some messages provide a reason for the connection failure, and other messages do not provide details on the cause of the failure. Several different key ring and certificate configuration issues can cause SSL connection failure. Next, we will look at the documentation needed to identify the cause of a SSL connection failure. To resolve SSL connection failures, here is a list of the documentation that is required. First is the complete server or client job log, showing any messages related to the connection failure. Second is the list of the key ring, 
Here are the ESM commands that can be used to list the key ring. Next for a server, the check search chain command can be used to verify the certificate status and keys, as well as the signing chain of the personal certificate. For a client, the check cert command can be used to verify the cert auth certificates in the key ring. Here are the ACF2 and top secret check cert commands for either the server or client key ring certificates. Note that for top secret, the check cert must be done against a TSS dataset containing a PKCS7 package of the personal certificate. RACF uses the RACD cert list chain and list commands to check cert certificates. The fourth piece of documentation needed is the ESM resource security report which verifies that the server or client task has the authority to access the key ring and the private key of the personal certificate. The last piece of documentation needed is the ESM security trace. The trace is needed to verify that the key ring, cert auth certificates and personal certificate are being returned as well as personal certificates private key. Please note that the ESM security trace must be started prior to the server or client task starting. Since the R underscore data live, calls to request the key ring and certificates are done during task initialization. So if a client or server task is active, that task would need to be stopped. The ESM trace started and then the task restarted. Both ACF2 and Top Secret use the SecTrace operator command to trace the R data live calls for key rings and certificates as shown here. Here are the RACF commands to turn on the GTF trace to trace the R data live calls. The documentation can be reviewed by checking the following items, which can cause an SSL connection failure. For items 1 to 4, the check cert and list chain commands will provide information to verify that the signing chain is complete, the certificates are trusted, the certificates are not expired, and that any personal certificate has a private key. For item 5, the ESM Resource Security Report will provide details for any resource violations for resource classes facility and our data live that are related to the access of a key ring and or access to a personal certificate's private key. For item 6, the ESM security trace will provide details to verify that the expected key ring is being returned, that all of the certificates in the key ring are connected with the proper usage, and the private key is being returned for any personal certificate. Item 7, 8, and 9 are optional requirements dependent on the SSL application. If items 1 through 6 have been verified, Sites may want to check the application documentation for these optional requirements. Item 7 is the key ring default, which can specify the personal server certificate. For item 8, some applications initialization parameter point to both the key ring as well as the personal certificate's label. In this case, verify that the personal certificate's label matches label specified in the application's parameter file, noting that the label is case sensitive. For item 9, some applications require that the server certificate's subject name includes the domain or host name of the server that the client is connecting to. The OMVS SecTrace traces our data live calls that an application makes to request the key ring, as well as all of the certificates in the key ring. The first our data live call is function equals data get first to request key ring information and the first certificate connected to the key ring. Then the application will keep making our data live calls with function equals data get next to request the next certificate until there are no more certificates in the key ring at which point the ESM will return the return code 8 slash 8 colon 44. The OMVS sec trace entries on the next few slides are based on the following key ring with a personal server certificate myserver.cert and its signing chain of three cert auth certificates. Each our data live call results in several CES-2205i and CES-2206i messages. The first CES-2205i message is the start of the our data live call, as shown with exit equals pre and a return code of NA. The last message is a CES-2205i message with exit equals post and a return code with values. This entry is the end of the trace entry for that our data live call. The next few slides will show the traced entries for a key ring containing a personal certificate and the three cert auth certificates in its signing chain. Here we see the first or data live trace entries associated with the function equals data get first requesting the key ring information and the first certificate. The CES2206i trace messages in between the starting and ending CES2205i messages provide the details related to the or data live key ring and certificate return values. 
The last CES 2205i message with return code of 0 slash 0 colon 0 indicates that the key ring in the first certificate was successfully returned. Note the user equals in purple is the logon ID or user the server where client task is running under. The ring name equals in blue is the key ring, ring name. The usage equals in orange shows the usage that the certificate was connected to the key ring with. The label equals in red is the label of the certificate. This is the first of the three cert auth certificates in the signing chain. Here are the next are data live trace entries associated with the function equals data get next, requesting the next certificate. We see the first CAS 2205i pre-trace our data live call and the last CAS 2205i post trace our data live call with zero return codes, indicating the certificate was returned successfully. Note that this entry only includes detail for the next certificate and not the key ring information from the first call. Just like the trace entries from the previous our data live call, the user information and the certificate usage and label information is returned. This is the second of the three cert auth certificates in the signing chain. Here are the next our data live trace entries associated with the function equals data get next, requesting the next certificate. The last CAS 2205i post trace our data live call with zero return codes indicates that another certificate was returned successfully. Just like the trace entries from the previous our data live call, the user information and the certificate usage and label information is returned. This is the last of the three cert auth certificates in the signing chain. Here are the next our data live trace entries associated with the function equals data get next, requesting the next certificate. The last CAS 2205i post trace or data live call with zero return codes indicates that another certificate was returned successfully. Just like the trace entries from the previous our data live call, the user information and the certificate usage and label information is returned. Note that in this case, the certificate being returned is the personal server certificate, with its private key length and type as shown highlighted in yellow. If the private key information is not in the trace entry for a personal certificate, that would indicate one of two problems. One, the certificate does not contain a private key. Or two, the certificate does contain a private key, but the user does not have access to the private key based on an ESM resource validation. In this case, the trace entries show that the private key was successfully returned. Here on the next are data live trace entries associated with the function equals data get next, requesting the next certificate. This last CAS 2205i post trace or data live call with 8 slash 8 colon 44 return codes indicates that there are no more certificates to be returned from the key ring. At this point, the application makes no further our data live calls and is ready for the SSL connection. This wraps up the OMVS SEC trace entries associated with the return of a key ring and the certificates connected to the key ring. In summary, the OMVS SEC trace provides details to verify that the expected key ring is being returned. All of the certificates in the key ring are connected with the proper usage, and the private key is being returned for any personal certificate. For rack of details on IBM SAFTrace for debugging key ring certificate issues, see IBM using SAFTrace to debug IBM HTTP server problems documentation. Please click on the button to access the documentation. This video showed you how to recognize and solve common problems related to SSL key ring and certificate configurations and learn some debugging tips.